Good evening and welcome to Omni Bros Live uh, on a Monday night. This is one of your hosts, Omni Dog from Omni Dog's Vault, along with my other host, Omar from Near Mint Condition. Omar, how's it going? It's going well. It's going well. Thank you for having me on, Jess. Feels just like yesterday or last Thursday that we were on. Um, it does feel like that. It was because it was. Oh, okay. Because it was. Yeah. How are you, man? How was your weekend? Have a good weekend. All that. Good. I did. I started irredeemable, so I'm starting my irredeemable read through, so I can actually have a video on it. Oh, awesome! Yeah, I heard you were going to do a review, right? Um, yeah. So yeah, we're back to doing uh, hauls and what we read, and then talk about a little bit of what's coming up this Tuesday, tomorrow, and Wednesday, the release day. So thank you for joining us. everybody you know being our sponsors right and giving us an awesome four percent off an additional four percent off this week with the code omni bros live and the code is good up until friday this at, coming friday right yeah friday at midnight so i will be taking advantage of that code up this coming tomorrow this coming tomorrow it is not stackable with your loyalty discount of two percent but i mean it's four percent so hey uh my suggestion is go get some of those indie books that never, never go on sale. <laughs> but so did that, did that count as our IST promotion? Of course. Okay. I got, it. I got this, man. <laughs> In stock trades, our sponsor, InStockTrades.com. All right. So kick it off, man. Hauls. I heard okay. you've had, you hauled hard. I did haul hard this week. I, I am within budget, but just barely. Um, some of the stuff I ordered a while ago and it just came in, so that doesn't count, of course. Um, that it counts. Past Jess made the problems for present Jess. So, yeah, first, past Jess was a lot more fun, you know? <laughs> he was, he was. Into blowing money, you know, just on stupid shit. This new guy, and eh, not so much. Yeah. So what did past Jess get that you forgot about? Uh, I totally forgot. I got the mind management limited edition little pamphlet. It's it's little compared to like a book. It's more of a pamphlet, um, but it's a signed, interesting little dealy bobber. Only 500 were made. This looks like a zine that I would have picked up back in the old days. So that's pretty cool. Then you'll be proud of me. I bought my first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles title from Stan Sakai himself. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if that counts or not. <laughs> this is as we'll, close to TMNT as I'm going to get. We'll let it count. We'll let it count. <laughs> it Just came, because it shows turtles. It came from Stan Sakai and had um, a oh, little wow. cool thing in it. Yeah, a signed print. Um, or not a print, but it looks like a blow card, kind of. But he also was nice enough to do a sketch inside every book. So that's what my sketch is. Of a turtle. So see, I'm a turtle sketch person now. I hate that your first turtle book comes with an original sketch from Stan Sakai. <laughs> you know how that makes me feel? I have no turtle sketches from Stan Sakai. That's awesome. You're a big uh, fan of going to his website, right? That's where you usually get these? Yeah. And I, But I, I found out for the mind manager thing and the Teenage Mutant you Jimbo, yo Jimbo thing. Mm -hmm. I found out about those through the page. Uh, on the, I mean, the Omnibus Collectors Facebook group. I found out about them. They said it's up, it's up, it's up. So I went right away and ordered. Man, that is so cool. Yeah, I've got, I've amassed a little decent amount of um, Sakai stuff, so I'm really happy with it. Yeah, yeah. and I've heard the guy. I don't know if you've ever met him or not, but the guy I did just last year in Baltimore. Yeah, he's a really nice dude, too. I know we say that about a lot of the people we meet. I haven't heard you say anything about a, anybody being a jerk. Well, I haven't, yeah, you're right. I haven't met a jerk yet, which is I've, good. I, I've met a couple, but, you know, it's probably because they're old and really good. <laughs> I'm setting your ways, man. But, um, <laughs> no, I heard uh, he was a, he was a really good dude. And I know he lo he lost his wife last year, right? The one that he, he always dedicates. That's what I thought I heard her. He was with her at Baltimore. He was with him at Baltimore. She was with him at Baltimore. Because I know that he dedicates a lot of the books to her. Um, I thought that, that it was definitely his wife that was with him. I thought. 
I <laughs> thought so. Um, but I think, yeah, I think she passed away. Uh, man, when was that? Well, let's double no, check no. that. She passed away in 2014, so we were both wrong. <laughs> it was not oh. last year. and So that wasn't minute. his wife with him. Maybe it was his sister or something. I don't know. I, just, oh, I had no idea. I uh, just know that he dedicates a lot of the books to her. That's the only reason why I knew she had passed away. Um, I'm sorry, man. Uh, what else I did you end up was, getting? I, I thought he dedicated them to her because he just loved her or something. I didn't know she passed away. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, you can do that. You can do that. And I think he was dedicating to him long before she passed away. Huh. I got, uh, if if it's a, a week in the life of Omnidog, um, it's time for uh, a pervy book. <laughs> and pervy. this is Drawing Beautiful Women, the Frank Cho Method. Oh. I can't really show you the front cover. Oh, you can put your hands on it. Okay. Let's see. What do you got? Nice. Right there. nice. Well, I almost didn't make it. Yeah, that's the front cover. This was the Kickstarter edition that is a limited uh, edition that I got from Brandon Lynch on the page. Just got like tassels or something, like I, I assume, right? No nips. No. Yeah, they're there. <laughs> they're there. Pervy <laughs> book. A life. <laughs> <laughs> Every week, a pervy book. That's what I decided my motto is. Um, and then on your recommendation from Brandon, I also got, and now I'm really worried because your taste in books sucks. <laughs> I just wow, it. what an ass. <laughs> <laughs> Busting on X-Men Blue and Gold for the past year, and then it turns out you buy the damn things when they come out. No, I bought Volume Zero, which has nothing to do with the comic books that are out right now. Mm, it's, okay. just, it's just what they call it x-men blue golden uh golden x-men blue and gold volume zero has nothing to do with the comic books that are coming out right now it's just the way they can cash in sure omar sure all right whatever <laughs> i got i got the six volume set of what you recommended first kingdom by jack Katz, which apparently took forever to make and i can see why it is the most detailed this is like old EC Comics type detail, beautiful stuff. Um, well, there's a lot of naked chicks in this too, good. Um, but this is oh, beautiful. Worry, there's, there's plenty of man beef in there too. <laughs> Just a heads up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the warning. But there's, um, I didn't feel like going out and finding all these by myself. I don't, I don't think they're out of print, are they? Uh, are they? I don't think so. I, I think In Stock Trades has most of them. I think with the exception of like one or three, one of them, but yeah, they're, they're, I really like that story. Like I said, it's really uh text heavy and dense, but yeah. And, but the art is so gorgeous that I got all six volumes from uh, Brandon. So that was cool. Then from in stock trades, Superman, the exile omnibus. Josh Reed photo baited me hard on the collector page, and I bit. I decided I was going to get this. I, even if it's bad Superman, it's Superman, and it looked really good. And I said, that's cool. I really I, want it. I enjoy that story. Okay, good. Which brings me to your next recommendation. Jeez. X Men <laughs> Legion Quest. I'm sure this sucks. Now, I gave you like two paragraphs worth of why I'm buying it and maybe why <laughs> you should buy it. <laughs> yeah, and that sounded like a recommendation to me, but it's got Legion in it, whom I love, so that's cool. Yeah, this is after he went in, um, after the Shadow King saga, the Muir Island saga, he was put in a comatose state, like in X Factor 70, and he wakes up in this, so it's X Factor like 108 or yeah 108 so that was left out of the age of apocalypse omnibus and that leads up to the legion quest which is where he travels back in time to kill magneto but oops he accidentally kills his father instead and they're causing <laughs> the age of apocalypse um but yeah it was, it was fun I'm, I'm surprised they didn't put i mean if you're gonna bother putting legion quest into the into the age of apocalypse omnibus i'm not sure why you wouldn't start at the logical place where david wakes up you know out of a coma but that's Marvel, you know, collected edition editors for you. Okay. Well, I'll have to take your word for it because I haven't read it yet. So, like everything, I haven't read it yet. Uh, one book I am up to speed on is Gwenpool. 
because it's so thin. I, it's a book I can read. So this is the last edition of Gwenpool. I uh, love Gwenpool. She's crazy and Dr. Doom's in it. So that's got to be good. And then since it got destroyed in the flood, I lost my Hawkman Mousetrap Binding Omnibus. So I'm getting the collected editions now in paperback, which the binding is fine. And so I'm pretty excited about that. I'm as about as excited as I get. And then I got 80 Years of Superman. Oh, yeah. Have you opened that? Like, No, I will if you want me to. I just want to see what it is. Okay. Because I really thought that was the action. Um, I, I thought so, too. 1000. Apparently, it's, it's not. So, Correct. Yeah, I'm it's, curious to see what they have in there. Okay. They have wow, pretty long table of contents. The coming of Superman, which is the first of him from Action Comics One, Mystery of the Freight Train Robberies, Ash Can Covers, Revolution in San Monte from Action Comics, um, an essay from Tom DeHaven, The Origin of the Vigilante. The Terrible Toy Man, How I Saved Superman by Marv Wolfman. The unpublished story, Too Many Heroes, is an unpublished story from Siegel and Schuster, which I can turn to to show you what it looks like. Unpublished, huh? That's cool. Unpublished and uncolored. It is right here called Too Many Heroes. This is Siegel and Schuster. Oh, wow. This is like straight from the drawing board it looks like so this is actually a pretty long story like a 12 page story <clears throat> that's that so it contains a bunch of superman stories um world's greatest heroine endurance a bunch of essays um a new story called the game from paul levitz and Neil Adams. The boy Who Stole <laughs> Superman's Cape from Action Comics Zero, Grant Morrison, a bunch of other comics. Superman Doesn't Exist, Superman Takes a Wife, Squatter, Ma Kent's photo album, an essay by Gene Lun Yang, Secrets in the Night, A Hero's Journey, cover highlights. Let's see what that is. Yeah, I want to see that. I was curious because it was one of those books that was a maybe for me. Because when is Action 1000 hit? Is it next month or is it end of this month? I thought it was May. Okay. We'll double check that. So this is just a little collection. The Golden Age, the Silver Age. This is just a small collection. The Bronze Age, the Dark Age. Oh. It's called the Dark Age now, apparently. Things went dark. The modern age and now. Is it the dark age because Bendis is taking over? <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> a really cool dust jacket list book. Oh. Omnipool says it's next Wednesday. Okay, then Omnipool must be right. Yeah, yeah. Here's what the yeah. book looks like without the dust jacket on. This is pretty bitchin'. Oh, so that's this, awesome. Yeah, this is a sampler with an unpublished story and a new story. Um, so it looks um, it looks like something I'd like. If, if somebody already has all the Superman material, uh, they may not want it, but this made for a nice little package for me uh, to get. And that is what I hauled. That's what you hauled. Okay. Um, well, let me uh, let me talk about what I got. So, um, wait, hold on. Omnipool says it's this Wednesday. Uh, yeah, Action Comics 1000, uh, the 18th. Okay. Um, okay, so the very first thing I got was, um, this is a recommendation from, um, 11 o'clock comics. It's called. Shut up, <laughs> <you jerk. laughs> I don't listen to that shit. Uh, no, nah, man. This is a uh, Jess and Peter M. Both recommended the shit out of this book, and I found it at a comic book store, and it was just on a whim. I'm like, oh, I need something to read, and 
I started reading it because um I remember you talking about it. You love the dialogue that the kid like the way the kids sound. Yeah. Uh, I think it's got a lot of heart too, mm -hmm. and it's really good. So I'm not gonna talk too much about it because you this is actually what I have been reading. And I think you have sold it enough. So if nobody has picked it up, I was probably the last person that you've recommended it to that has not picked it up. But hey, I actually listened to you when I went and got four kids walk into a bank, which was really good. I really, I'm halfway through. I can't wait to see what happens. I'm kind of worried, but we'll see. Um, <laughs> and then I got an indie book called The Lost Path. Um, I got this mainly because of the art. Um, it's Emil Fletchius, I think, is who does it. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I've read it in, like, I uh, woke up early Saturday morning, I couldn't go to sleep, and that's what I do, I read comic books, I pulled it off my shelf, and I was like, okay, well, let's see what this is about, because the pictures had me interested, and it's pretty much these three boys go on a journey to try to find some magical crown in this forest, and they run into spirits, spirits of the forest, um, Maybe it was too smart for me. I don't know. Maybe I missed something, but I would. <laughs> I, I I got it for the art, and I got it for ten bucks. So yeah, it was okay. The story itself was okay. I think it could have been a lot better, but that that was my take on it. Um, but yeah, if you're a big fan of sequential art like I am, sometimes you're like, ah, eh, you know, forget the story, to dig the art, which is why I own a lot of Bendis in oversized format. <sighs> because he's usually teamed up with a damn good ar artist. Kind of like when he's going to take over Superman. He's going to be with Ivan Reyes, one of my favorite artists. So, uh, yeah, this was okay. And next up, I got Batman, the Dark Detective, Volume 1. Now, if you don't know what these are, DC, you know, this is amazing. Yeah, 30 years it took him. No, nope, 85. Uh, 33 years. To finally start releasing Batman Post-Crisis. So this is the first set of Batman Post-Crisis. There's also going to be Batman the Cape Crusader, which uh, features stories from Batman and Detective Comics. This this also features stories from Detective Comics and Batman. <laughs> However, this skips year two because they just recently released an oversized hardcover. And year two is one of my favorite Batman stories. But that's got art by Todd McFarlane and Alan Davis. But Alan Davis has art in here. Too. So this is the, the Legends crossover. So it's some of the earliest uh, post-crisis, post-year one Batman that you'll get. And I think it's really cool. And they've already uh, solicited volumes two of each one, the Dark Detective and the Cape Crusader. Hopefully they will not cancel them, but it's DC, so who knows? If only me and three other people start pre-ordering them, maybe they will cancel them. <laughs> um. Uh, I have not read most of this stuff because I own a single here and there, but I'm a huge fan of Alan Davis and Mike W. Barr. So I'm looking forward to reading this for the first time. Now you're, like I said, year two, one of my favorite stories. So I'm, um, it goes like, hold on. Let me tell you exactly what this covers because it's pretty interesting because there is a gap in here. So this covers uh, Detective Comics 568 through 574 and skips year one in the full circle. And then it goes on to 579 to 582. So that's it. That's it. That's all I hauled. Mm -hmm. Looks Didn't good. Looks good. And did you, was that all you read too? Or do you have more stuff that you read? Um, I read those. I caught up on Avengers No Surrender, which is wonderful. I cannot wait to get that in a hardcover edition. It's already been solicited for $50. I hope that's not a price mistake, considering it's going to be 20, I think when it's all said and done, 20 issues maybe. Um, it take, it really harkens back to the days of classic Avengers fighting this omnipotent beings. And it's all the Avengers together. Shit hits the fan. The Avengers start kicking ass again. Then shit hits the fan again. And you're like, oh, what's going to happen? So it's got a great creative team. Um, I'm excited for that. I caught up on X-Men. Trying to push myself through the new Runaway series that came out. But I, I, I'm serious. I, I don't think anybody but Brian K. Vaughn can write that series. Um, and there was something else that just started. Red Domino, and I really liked that. That was Gail Simone. And I read uh, Exiles. And that was that was a good that was a good start. I like where that's going. So we will see. 
Nice. Yeah, that, that is everything I'm about. I read. How about you, sir? I read Global Frequency, the Deluxe Edition, which was maybe my favorite Ellis book. I, it's very accessible with different artists for every story, so it keeps it fresh. I did a whole, um, I did a whole review on it earlier this week, like last Friday. I did a review, so I don't need to repeat myself. Everybody, go to Omni Dogs Vault to see how much I enjoyed it. But this book is excellent, and I really loved it. Uh, on Riley Moore's recommendation, I read Centipede, which was a blast. A centipede has come to an alternate Earth and has killed everybody, and it's the last man versus the centipede and all his little minions, and he's fighting, and he, he eats a piece of centipede and has this hallucinogenic journey. It's just wild and trippy. The art's kind of chunky for me, um, but it didn't detract from how fun the story was. So this is based on the Atari game has nothing to do with video games, but it's based on a centipede coming to an earth, destroying all civilization, and one guy is standing up against the centipede. Who's the creator on that? Or who's the writer? I know Riley really likes him. That's why. Max, Yeah, Max Bemis. Okay. Bemis. Bemis, okay. And we already reviewed this. I read Spider-Man Deadpool, which we already reviewed. And then I read Green Lantern Earth 1 last week which was fantastic. Was really? fantastic. Yeah, it was really good. I enjoyed it. Hal Jordan's an astronaut on some dumpy old asteroid mining for beryllium or some type of uh, thing. He discovers a ship with a dead lantern and a um, power ring and battery and, and a manhunter stuck inside the, stuck inside the um, ship that's not activated yet and this um all these other lanterns on various other planets have unactivated rings but they're wearing them just because they know they're important and oa has been destroyed by manhunters but he goes there and um adventures ensue it's totally worth reading it's one of the better earth one books i think there is um second only to wonder woman my favorite earth one book so I highly recommend that book. Too bad global frequency pages are so wavy. They're not wavy. Oh, your copy's not wavy. Did you get the what? first you got Did the first edition, limited edition one that aren't wavy? <laughs> are the pages wavy? I don't know. I haven't picked it up, so the title page is a little wavy, but nothing else is wavy. Everything looks good. I don't know what that, um, I don't know. These things are fine. Hmm. Maybe there was a, maybe there was a bad batch somewhere. I think all the bad batches went to Europe. <laughs> Is that what usually happens? Yeah. We send all the crappy ones to Europe. <laughs> uh, okay. So is that all you read or? Surely That's all read I read. That's, That's all you read. 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 Really? You had a week, dude. <laughs> oh, you must you must be currently reading Planetary, which will be. Excuse me a sec. Okay. <laughs> we pushed back Planetary because Gabe had a funeral to go to, so Planetary the review will be done next Monday, which is April the twenty. Help me out, calendar twenty third. So yeah, that's when we will be doing the Planetary. We're definitely doing it next week. I did finish it. Um, and I'm now reading Irredeemable, so I can get an Irredeemable review going. I have five volumes to read, so it'll probably take me a month the way I read. I'm a slow reader. Now, you've you've read those before, though, right? You finished I have, yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah, but it was like three years ago, so I want to catch up three or four years ago even. So I want to catch up and get all up to speed again and relive the glory. Because you said... And I quote you on this that it has one of your favorite comic book endings of all time, if not your favorite, right? It is my favorite ending ever in a comic book. The best ending ever, in my humble opinion. Yes. Huh. I did say that. I stand by that. Okay. Okay. I'm um, I'm excited to read them when they go back into when in stock trades gets them back in stock. 
because uh, I think volumes four and five are out right now. Yeah, just, that's weird how there's such a small print run that in stock ran out of them right away. Well, what happened was everybody got hyped up over what you were, how you were selling the book, so they went out and bought it, leaving you know us poor schmucks to get them later. <laughs> it's all based on what you what you say, man. Oh, right. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. People listen to you. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> you, have a, you have a voice, Jess. I went to pick up fucking four kids walking to a bank because of you. Right on, man. And I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I think it's great. Um, no, yeah, it's weird. Because, yeah, I mean, it's boom, right? So every once in a while, much like IDW, they don't print that many of the first printing of the hardcovers, and the warehouses eventually run out. So then what do you do? You reprint it. But it takes like about a month or two to get those back in stock. Right. So I'm sure some somewhere some warehouse somewhere has them. Hopefully with no wavy pages. So <laughs> I agree with Sledge. We do need a Qubit series. I love Qubit. Qubit, what's Qubit? He's um he's one of the other main characters in Irredeemable, besides the Plutonian. Oh, okay. Because you were just talking about Centipede, so I thought you were talking about Qbert. Uh, oh, Qbert, <laughs> the game, right? I remember Qbert. Yeah, of course you do. It's a great game. <laughs> I can I can, I can see that being made into a comic book. I can picture the Qbert guy right now. Yeah, the guy had a potty mouth. Remember? Like yeah. Cursing up a storm, or maybe. But all right. So those were a reason our halls didn't haul as hard as Jess did, but. Let's talk about some books that are coming out this week, man. Okay. And I know the DC solicits just went up today for the month of May, but let's look at the solicits for uh, this Tuesday, tomorrow and Wednesday. Am I screen sharing? You sure are. You remember how? Yeah. Just stack. I want to make sure all the weird stuff is closed. Let's see. Uh, screen share. Wait, first I maximize. Whoops, but then how do I get back to uh ah and you gotta click up at the top. Man, I need to add team viewer on your computer so I can just remote in and do it. Yeah, wait, let me minimize before I let me let me minimize before I Okay, let me screen share and then I'll maximize. Cause I don't have the chops, man. Screen share. Your entire screen, right? Got it, brother. Sure. Okay. Are we good? How's that? You see it? Mm-hmm. Okay. I see it. There it is. All right. So, you are in control, Jess. Don't forget to put the little white box around you so i already forgot <laughs> that's why i'm reminding you that was now how do i do it you go back to us and then you highlight you and that's how that's done okay <laughs> i can take directions though think if i couldn't take directions and i really botched it up there okay <laughs> everything's on me now all right, let's rock and roll. What's coming out? <laughs> what do we got coming out? Boom From Studios. Boom, Boom Studios, Cyanide and Happiness, Fence Trade Paperback, Jim Henson, Power of the Dark Crystal, Planet of the Apes Archive. From Dark Horse, something everybody's been waiting for, BPRD Hell on Earth Volume 2 hardcover. Oh, yep, that's one of my buys, definitely. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, me too. Fight Club, DC Comics. It's and lots of Supermans, apparently. Um, right here we have The American Way, which I don't know anything about, Batman Arkham, Deathstroke. I'll definitely be getting this. Rebirth Deathstroke is awesome. That's uh, Christopher Priest, correct? Yes. Awesome. Green Lantern, Silver Age, trade paperback. Ding, ding, ding. Insta buy here. Harley Quinn and the Gotham City Sirens. Gotham City Sirens 1 through 26 and Catwoman 83 are included in one of the most fun books Harley Quinn's ever even been in. This book rocks. 
Now that book will be 50% off on in stock trades. I'm looking at the list. So it will be $37.50. Nice. A steal plus the 4% off if you use the code Omnibros Live, all one word. Whoop, whoop. So that's a that's a great that's a great deal. Commandy Challenge, which I've heard about but decided I wasn't interested in. But it, those of you who are interested in it, here it is. Also 50% off. Nice. And of course, my favorite rebirth book, Red Hood and the Outlaws, Bizarro Reborn. I love Artemis. I love Bizarro. I even love the Red Hood, whom I actually hated before. So Okay, good. now I see. So it looks like in stock trades will be getting um copies of action comics number one thousand and they will be thirty percent off because they are so there's like in stock trades will be getting a floppy? It's not a floppy though, it's a hardcover, remember? Oh it is, that's right. Yeah, so okay, there's a nineteen thirties version variant edition, forties, fifties, sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties, two thousands, a blank variant, and then the standard copy that they're all getting them and they're all thirty percent off. So it's a eight dollar book, so that's five fifty nine. Plus your four percent? Plus the four percent. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. That is cool. <clears throat> IDW publishing. Four Sisters, Goosebumps. Here's a good series that I read. I'll get this. Half Past Danger hardcover, Dead to Rikes. This is fun. Half Past Danger hardcover. Yeah, in the world of Half Past Danger. Suddenly the time is two minutes till midnight. The Nazis have created a bioweapon that could be the end of everything, and all that stands in their way are a hard-drinking Irishman, a British femme fatale, a Japanese ninja with a pet dinosaur, and an American Marine who's literally bulletproof. Yeah, Damn. I loved it. I read that That's... in floppies, and I loved it. It was crazy. <laughs> that, sounds like a, that sounds like a sell. That sounds awesome. <laughs> it uh, was crazy. I loved it. That one will be 30% off because it's uh, IDW, but that sounds awesome. Um, Tarzan, Joe Kubert Tarzan, Lou Cameron, Unsleeping Dead, and Skippy, for those of you that collect daily comics. Isn't that you? Skippy. No, I don't really. That's more John P's jam. Okay. From, from Image, Alpha King. Black Monday Murders, definitely getting that. Oh, that's it. Yeah, I'm waiting for a hardcover. I'm hoping a hardcover gets announced. Yeah, I don't blame you. Uh, Elephant Men. And now Royal City. I don't. Is this a Lemire book? It looks like a Lemire book, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does look like a Lemire book. Like, yep. New yeah. chapter. I'd like to get that, I think. I don't know that I have the first one of that. Savage Dragon. Are you still reading Savage Dragon? I haven't read Savage Dragon in years, so I remember oh, okay. what Gabe told me. It got really creepy. Yeah. It's over-sexualized. But it was always over-sexualized, even though he showed me some panels, and I'm like, all right, yeah, you win. That's really over-sexualized. Yeah, I saw – yeah, I remember seeing some of those panels. Because, because, you know, even though it was, there was deep down a still a pretty decent story in there. Mm. Um, but, you know, whatever. Underwinter trade paperback. We go into Marvel Comics. Okay. Luke Cage, Phoenix Resurrection, Return of Jean Grey. What, again? Oh, come on, dude. You knew this was already happening. We talked about this. <laughs> you ever listen to me and Riley or Peter when we talk? <laughs> Art that, Germ DM variant. That book, let's see. One of those is 50% off. I think it's just the standard version of the Phoenix Resurrection. Okay, yeah. The Return of Jean Grey standard trade paperback is going to be nine, $8.99 with at 50% off. Now, this is a current book then. This isn't yeah. like the first time she returned. Okay, this is no. This is the last time that she returned, and then started the X Men Red, which I'm going to make you buy because they're awesome. Oh yeah, you did tell me X Men Red is good. Yeah, Punisher Platoon, which is supposed to be good, right? I haven't heard anything about this. Who's the creative team? Uh, uh, I thought it was. What the hell? Yeah, just don't. <laughs> okay. Garthanis. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sold. I like it. I like the way he writes Frank Castle. I do too. Um, runaways, there's that Runaways book good. I was telling you about that I was not a fan of, but hey, there might be people that like it. Runaways mm -hmm. Volume Ten, Rock Zombies. I think that's the last, um, the last volume, the previous volume before this one. 
there's your spider gwen but do you get these in hardcover or do you get these in trades i wait i wait for them in hardcover yeah okay now that that comic got canceled correct like it's no um, more. i just heard that today yeah i don't know that it got canceled did it get canceled or are they just stopping it canceled has a bit of a as is a bit of an epithet to some people so i did it just did they just well, decide to stop making it or I don't know because Marvel's doing that whole Marvel fresh bullshit so oh. <laughs> okay it got canceled who no who knows what they're gonna I don't know it'll come out with another another number one I'm sure uh, Robert Simonson oh the Runaways book is also fifty percent off by the way in stock on Tuesday okay and then here's a bunch of manga crap <laughs> such a hater. <laughs> if you like this stuff here it is look man that's cutie honey but going to guy that stuff is classic that's classic manga from the like 70s you would like that it's got bouncing boobs everywhere half naked chicks <laughs> running around hardly, hardly any plot <laughs> it's right up your alley oh uh, you got a bad rap uh. <laughs> hey, you did you did that to yourself <laughs> i did it totally you're right uh, here's an Aftershock comics. They put out good comics. Uh, let's see. Dark Ark. I think I've heard something good about Dark Ark. This is when, um, yeah, this is somebody else. Uh, oh, yeah, I think I want to get this. This is when um, somebody other than Noah is um, capturing all the evil creatures on uh, the Earth's soil for what happens but what will happen on a vessel crawling with monsters where insidious intrigue and horrific violence are the rule of law? So it's like there's two arcs and one of them contains all the goodness and the other contains all the evil. That sounds good. It's by Colin Bunn. I like his writing. Yeah, he's the guy that's doing X-Men go uh, blue right now. Hmm. So you're not a fan. Uh, no, I'm, I don't base... Look, seriously, dude, it is hard to write X-Men. I don't base anybody's writing on how well they write X-Men. Mm, okay. Um, Let's see. Ninjack. Which ninja? Okay, that's the new Ninjack. Mm-hmm. And Salvages. Pandora in the Crimson. Wait, did you ever get into any of those more... more what is it? Moorcock? No. Uh, I thought that would be you. The oh, up here. Yeah. Oh, Howard Chaykin. Interesting. No, I never did. Um, maybe it was the art that reminded me of something that you would like. That's why I was wondering. Naked chicks again? <laughs> no, I don't know. It wasn't have naked chicks. It was have naked dudes. Have naked elves. Ah. Terminal Lance Ultimate Omnibus Hardcover. I don't know what that is, but it's got the word omnibus, so you know I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's got to be on my shelf. What? This is Taco. Oh, I've heard this Taco is really good, actually. You mind clicking on that? This is a taco. Squirrels don't eat tacos. Maybe it's my kids that are talking. Oh, my gosh, I'm getting my kids mixed up with my friends that are telling me what to read. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, no, puppy, it's really good. <laughs> this is a taco. All right, so, okay. Hmm. Sounds cute. Might be something I'll get for my kids. And that is it. That is it. Okay. Yeah, Let April seems to be a small this. month for comics. Like we're getting like the first week of uh, May, we're literally getting like three or four omnis, right? We're getting the reprint of the Max uh Grant Moore or yeah, the Garth Ennis uh, Punisher Max. We're getting the first volume of that. Uh we're getting the Weapon X book. And then we're getting Wolverine Goes to Hell, I think. If I'm not mistaken, those are all like the first couple of weeks, if not the first week. But yeah, this um, this whole month has been kind of slow. You get it figured out there, champ? You got it? How's it look? Yeah, perfect, man. Good job. Well done. <laughs> as long as you, you got the square off of you, too? Uh, it's going back and forth to both of us. You did your job, then. Yay. Good job, Jess. Didn't even need tech support there towards the end. <laughs> so proud of it. Right on, man. All right. Um, so you want to take this to the chat, see if anybody has any questions? I think there were a couple questions for you earlier. Oh, okay. I didn't see them. The Carnage Omnibus, that comes at the end of the month, I think. Some uh, avatars. Yeah. I think that's like the last 
the last Omni we get this month in April. Yeah, hmm. so I was right. There are three big books coming out the same week in, in May. It's going to be crazy. In May? Yeah, That's I wasn't the, kidding. It's the like two the, Wolverine books and then... Uh, the Garth Ennis uh, Punisher Max. Oh, okay. And I want to say DC has a book in there too. Maybe it's Nightfall, but that's not until maybe the end of the month. Okay. It's just getting God of War. <clears throat> it sure looks great. I have to finish Last of Us before I do anything else. I am not getting another video game until my daughter and I go through Last of Us. If only sure that... That mentality was like with comics, right? I'm not buying another <laughs> book until I read everything I own. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, you got a good point there. Yeah, we wouldn't be buying shit for the next year. <laughs> By the time like, we start buying again, everybody's like, oh, man, those books are out of print. <laughs> uh, check out Hellblade. I'm actually playing Hellblade right now. Senua's Sacrifice. That's a good game. I'm enjoying that, Shorty. What, oh. uh, let me go back in the chat and see if there was anything... Next week is also Absolute Preacher 3. That's the final volume. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. There was a super Oh, so, okay. So, apparently, there's a thing going on right now because somebody meant Taylor Alexander Cassidy. Nice last name, by the way, because it's funny that you mentioned this. Uh, saying that the Carnage Omnibus is a paperback. And I think there was a solicitation goof up either on Amazon or the actual um, catalog where Carnage and Venom are both in trade paperback format. Man, but there's no way in hell Marvel is going to release those Omnis in trade paperback. They did the same thing when they resolicited the Fantastic Four Volume 2. when it, uh, Or I'm sorry, the second printing of the uh, Stanley and Jack Kirby's fi Fantastic Four Volume 1. Everybody freaked out. They were like, oh, my God, we're getting a reprint. Oh, my God, it's a paperback. Like, all over the forums. This was probably, like, 2000, 2005, 2006. Like, we, everybody freaked out, including myself. I'm like, oh, this sucks. I really wanted the hardcover. And then, you know, in the end, they released them in hardcover. So I don't yeah. see them ever releasing a omnibus and trade paperback format. They're not IDW or Image that seems to think that they hold really well. Right. Those things are definitely 100% hardcover. I'm saying it right now. Don't even worry about it. Or you're going to get a tattoo that says, uh, Jess was wrong <laughs> across your chest. <laughs> I will get a tattoo. All right. I'll get a tattoo. I'll get a tattoo if I'm wrong. All right. I I'm going to let uh, John P. Uh, tell you what to put on you. <laughs> <laughs> if you're wrong. <laughs> That guy seems to be pretty creative. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Hey, guys, after Batman White Knight, Sean Murphy may be doing his own Batman universe. Do you think it's a good idea, or will it get a sh the shitty sequel syndrome? Um, I've only read the first issue of White Knight, and I thought it was pretty good. I'm, that's another one I'm going to wait on to get in collected edition. I I don't know. I kind of like um I like Sean Murphy's artwork more than I do his writing. I think his writing is is it, and I'm not saying it's horrible or anything. Um but yeah, I guess he, he to me it's about as good as like maybe Manipul or Tony Daniel. Maybe better than Tony Daniel actually. I take that back. Tony Daniel had some hit and misses. It's hard for me to uh pick up a writer that starts doing his own uh i'm sorry an artist that starts writing his own book like i'm i'm very weary of that maybe because i'm one of those image guys that went to image comics to follow the artist and i don't think any of them could write worth a damn except for larson larson <laughs> savage dragon was a lot of fun and jim valentino but jim valentino wasn't also their strongest artist i was talking about jim lee mark silvestri and uh Tom McFarland mainly. Uh, Jess, did you read Incorruptible? Yes. If so, is it as good as Irredeemable? It's pretty good. It is uh, not quite as good as uh, Irredeemable, but it's still very much worth a read. And is it a sequel or what? Um, it's more of a companion. You don't. You can read it after Irredeemable. There is a tiny little crossover, but it's very self-explanatory in Irredeemable. 
You don't need to read uh, Incorruptible before Irredeemable. You can read it alongside or after. It's a standalone series is what I'm trying to say here. It's really good. Do you think that'll be collected in hardcover like Irredeemable? That is a good question. <clears throat> I am fairly clueless on things. I knew Irredeemable was going to get a hardcover because it's so popular. Mm-hmm. I don't know that Incorruptible... I'll tell you what, I'll ask Mark Wade in Baltimore. I'll ask well, him that very question. He'll be a nice guy to me. Not if I ask him first. Well, I'll be holding the camera, so one of us will ask him. <laughs> we'll ask Mark Wade together, and he's going to be like, what are you two fools talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I think that guy owes me a dollar. <laughs> um, yeah, because remember, Irredeemable was um, – originally it was like an absolute format, right? Because I almost bought that, and then they canceled that line to go into the hardcovers. Right. Yeah, it had a definitive edition like the definitive. boys. Yeah. yeah, and they stopped it, though. They never finished it. It only had issues like one through eight or something in it. Yeah. Jeez. I hate I hate when that happens. That's why sometimes I wait on these things, especially from smaller publishers like IDW and Boom, to finish out at least two or three. Because um, Transformers did the same thing. Uh, before these IDW collection Transformers, um, IDW released these absolute size um, collections of Transformers. And there were two volumes, and I was like, oh, okay. But then they didn't announce any more after, like, six months. So I was like, uh, let's see. And then I waited about a year, and then they announced IDW hardcover collection. So I was like, well, I guess they canceled that line and moving forward with the hardcover. So that's the way I went. Yeah. Uh, Trigonosis asks, why does Jess refuse to read my recommendation? Z. Jenkins Sidekicks, Arch Enemies, and Bendis's Sam and Twitch. Okay, I'll read one of those. You pick, Trigonosis. Which book should I read? I'm leaning toward Jenkins' sidekicks, although I'm not sure I heard that much good about it. Is that I thought, a, is it yeah, I don't know. I'm not a fan of Jenkins, but I know these guys have been pushing you to read it. You can you can go and try it yourself. I think, you know, what's funny is when I had a podcast many years ago, that was one of my earliest interviews with a professional uh, comic book creator was Paul Jenkins and he he was just starting to write sidekicks and he is a hell of a guy too he's a really nice dude uh, British and crazy and can drink a lot <laughs> they but all can he's a fun dude I just never really took his you know wasn't that big of a fan of his writing though Okay, I actually like his writing so I'll read sidekicks so well, there you go see chicken nose just relax I, I will Avatar. I will definitely go do some interviews with Jess, especially if we find some cosplayers. <laughs> What's up, Gabe? What's up, guys? What's going on? Did you seriously sneak out? In, Did you sneak like, out of a funeral? Are you yeah. in, a, in a closet, buddy? No, I'm not in a closet. I'm not. I'm not you, Omar. <laughs> this is not my closet. Actually, this would be a pretty badass closet. Um, uh, how's it going, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. You know, got back from a funeral. So I decided, you know, I should come get some uh, good vibes going on with you guys for a little bit. Well, I'm sorry about your loss, dude. That sucks. Funerals are never that fun. Yeah, well, the next one to die is going to be the bitch Ann I don't like. (laughs) (laughs) Whoa, tell us how you really feel. (laughs) I gave somebody earlier was asking about those Gotham Academy books. Do you would you recommend those? 100%. 100%. Gotham Academy is fan fucking tastic. It's one of the best underappreciated books out there. I know Jess has it, and he's underappreciating them right now. <laughs> That's totally true. <laughs> you know they're not like a gi- like they're underneath a giant stack of like nudie books too. <laughs> he's like, oh, I gotta get through these first. He's like, sorry, I gotta read 15 more trades of Harley Quinn first. <laughs> yeah, he's got an Omni coming out this week, so. Yeah, you got the uh, Gotham City Sirens, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. When's uh when's Carnage? Is that next week or is that this week also? Carnage is next week. Okay, this has been just so much like in our chat in the Facebook group, just mad solicitations just popping up everywhere that I'm getting dates confused. Yeah, May is the big month. That's what we all decided. Because um, I think what we have left this month is uh, the Carnage Omnibus and the Absolute Preacher Volume Three. And then the Harley Quinn that comes out 
um, tomorrow, which is not even Harley Quinn. It's actually the Gotham City Sirens. I keep calling it Harley Quinn and the Gotham City Sirens, but that's not even the title of the book. I thought it was the title of the book. No, the title of the book was also Gotham City Sirens. Remember? Right, right. The, the, the actual title. The, 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 right, the omnibus to sell, much like any Deadpool <laughs> in X-Force books, they put her <laughs> name on it. Right. Pretty soon we'll have a Harley Quinn in Azrael Volume 1, which <laughs> I'd, I'd buy just to get some Azrael in Omni for, format. That'd be great, especially the uh, the Joel Casada stuff. That stuff is amazing. That yeah, time. yeah, it was it was awesome, dude. I almost I almost tagged you today. Uh, Rob Liefeld posted a picture of somebody that drew Bloodstrike mm -hmm. or Night. Bl I can't remember one of those shitty uh, uh, '90s characters that I know you would know. Blood Razor. Blood <laughs> Bloodstrike wasn't that the name of the team, and then it became like one dude that looked like Deathstroke, the Terminator. You would know. Uh yeah, young blood, young blood, and then no, not, no, 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 not young blood, fool, blood strike. Oh, I know blood, what you're talking about now. Blood yeah. pool, blood strike, brigade, all these crappy '90s Liefeld comics that you and I bought. I don't know about crappy, but yeah, I understand what you're talking about. Ah, all right, because I've been reading old Wizard magazines on my on my trip down here to California. So I'm right now I'm stooped in the middle of 1993, and this issue is all about uh, Frank Miller doing before he did Born Again and talking about how groundbreaking Born Again is going to be. And there's all kinds of just great, like, uh, extreme characters being announced in here and, like, how awesome Rob Liefeld is. And this is great stuff. But, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> hey, Jess, Connor Farugia said he is reading Fade Out, and it is an awesome read. Awesome read indeed. Yeah, it's one of my favorite. I love that book so much. I gave it to my sister for Christmas a couple years ago. <clears throat> that is a really good book, Connor. I'm glad you're enjoying it. You think that chick is hot in it too, don't you? you you'd be all over that too, when you just, even though she's like semi demon. <laughs> <laughs> I actually heard the chick, uh, the velvet. She's pretty sharp looking too. She's sharp looking, yeah. Uh, are you, was a are you saying I have something for um, comic characters? You like classy looking ladies? No. How, okay, like half naked, classy looking ladies. Yes, I do. But they still have to be class. They have to have that class, like you know, right aura about them. Like they wouldn't give me the time of day. Exactly. Like you, you wouldn't find them in like the front of a low rider magazine or nothing like that. Like, <laughs> low rider. Like, like the shit. Like the shit me and Gabe are into. <laughs> yeah, the shit me and Gabe are into. <laughs> uh, Taylor Brown, Jess, what's your readathon going to be this summer? That is a good question. It's either going to be Hickman, which will take me the better part of the year, starting with Secret Warriors and going through uh, Avengers. Or it's going to be Marvel Cosmic. Um, I'm going to do one of one of those two. Um, that's going to probably be my summer readathon. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good, man. Have you read Hickman's stuff before? I haven't read a single page of it. I've been saving it up. Oh, oh you awesome. have you have all the Hickman like before he became Hickman? Hickman stuff. Yeah. Like, like nightly news and was it transhuman? Uh, yeah, I have nightly news. Uh, oh, nightly news transhuman. Um, of course he does. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I actually read it too. So you would start with Secret Warriors, then move on to his Fantastic Four, and then try to throw in some Shield in there whenever that gets solicited, right? right. Some Shield, and then go on to the Avengers run. No, no, isn't there an Ultimate Avengers stuff in there for a little bit before you get into? Like, yeah, but that's the that's the Ultimate line though. That don't count. <laughs> that was good stuff. That was the uh, uh, what was it? The the, the creator? Or what did Reed Richards call himself? The Grand Wizard? No, no, that's totally the wrong thing. Never mind. Um, the Grand Wizard? Yeah, no, you're <laughs> thinking of that Southern outfit. Yeah, yeah. The Grand Wizard? Yeah, the Fantastic Car has like a Confederate flag on the top of it now. Yeah. yeah. Um, what about you, uh, Gabe? Do you, go ever, do you ever do any like summer readathons? Like, no, but I, I want to. There's just so much good stuff I have that I just want to just reread over again, especially like Hickman's, you know, uh, with my omnibuses and stuff like that I have, I really want to read uh, the Lee Kirby Fantastic Four stuff, all those omnibus first. Mm -hmm. Um, 
Then if any gauntlet box that I would really love to dive into that pretty soon. Mm, good point. Yeah, that's a really good one there to kind of get into. Uh, like we only have like two more left at the store. Those things are selling pretty good. That's, that's amazing. It's crazy for, for that price. That's for insane. full price. Yeah, man, totally. Yeah. I do. I used to do like every five years. I would read a chronological like X Men, starting with. It used to be starting with number one in the Silver Age, and then I stopped doing that and just started doing um, Giant Size One and up, including the new like including the ongoing titles with it, like New Mutants, then X Factor, uh, then Excalibur, and so on and so on. And I would do that every five years because I love. I mean, that, that's just something I always reread as X Men. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's coming on to the five years, and I'm like, man, should I do that this summer? Because I still have a lot of other books I need to catch up on. Like, oh my god, I love to. Yeah, like I, I own like a few of these. Like I have Manhattan Projects, I have East of West, I have all these uh, image books I'm looking at that I need to read. Um. Yeah, I mean, I would like to get the third Why the Last Man Absolute and burn through that, but I've never finished that series. Oh, you should, man! It's so wonderful. Yeah, I really I, I, that's why. That's why I never finished it. I didn't want it to end. You know, it's one of those things. It's like never watching the last episode of Mash. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have a big reading list, Jess, but please read Oko. I think you'd love it. I do have that book, and I will go upstairs tonight and pull it out, set it on top of all the nudie books, and read it. Liar. <laughs> Nothing goes on top of your nudie books. Uh, um, that's true. Yeah, uh, I remember you and I talking about that book because we were like, "Oh wow, it's selling out on Amazon for some reason." Right. That's right. Because yeah. they uh, had a short print run of it. It's a good book. Iron, Iron Cardinal said, "War of Kings." I would love to burn through like that the the newer cosmic saga comic. stuff. Oh, yeah, you, exactly. you would love it, dude. You would love it. It is some yeah. of the best. That that to me, like. I'm going to go ahead and say it. That's the DNA and even Keith Giffen stuff, starting with Annihilation all the way to the end of the War of the Kings, the Thanos Imperative. Probably the best comics I read in the last 20 years. So I, would, I would take it one step back before Annihilation and do uh, Thanos, uh, what was it called? Uh, Reser oh, no. Uh, Thanos, Redemption. Thanos Redemption. Uh, Redemption. Yeah. Redemption. Yeah, I would no. totally start from there and move forward for sure. <laughs> Cause I've read all that stuff, but never like in one big like, like, uh, like pathway, like like mapped out reading order, the chronological before. order. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, it is so good, dude. It is so good. I think I might do that. That's a great idea. Iron, uh, Iron Cardinal. I think he just picked my summer reading. I'm yeah, Brown, get soon. your mind out of the gutter. I'm talking <laughs> about a book that I'm gonna pull out and put on top of another book. Trig Trigonosis, I like I like that idea too. The Magnolia Burst Readathon, that sounds good. I would love to go back because there's some BPRD volumes I haven't finished yet. I haven't even finished Magnolia's uh, Hellboy in Hell. Yeah, see, there's so many books that I put down because they're not out yet, and then when they come out, I'm like, oh, I'll just reread the whole thing. You're just too busy buying uh, shitty X-Men trades that you have 50 copies of already. <laughs> you two cocksuckers better lay off. Of <laughs> you all buy shitty books all the time. I don't give you half as much shit. Oh, well, yeah, you do. Wait, oh, let, yeah. Me let, me, let me pull up the chat and, and screen share and show all the shit you give us in our chat. You dick. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but love. Nothing but love. Man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, which non Marvel DCs, Marvel slash DC series would you like to see on HBO or elsewhere? Transmetropolitan. Yeah. Why the Why the Last Man? I mean, I I, I I know it's a thing that they've been trying to do, but if Brian K. Vaughn can like oversee that project, I think Why the Last Man would make an amazing TV series. But does it have to be HBO, you think? Or like off cable like that? I think it would be more fun on HBO. I mean, it doesn't have to be. I mean, it, get it, would, it would be. It, sure. Oh, yeah. And who doesn't like that, right, Jess? <laughs> huh? Yeah. What? Naked chicks? <laughs> I, you got my attention again. <laughs> You've read all the Why the Last Man, right, Jess? Yes. Yeah. I think that would make a good. I love that book. Yeah. I loved the ending. I loved everything about it. Yeah, it was great. Um, 
Spawn, uh, uh, Tyler uh, Alexander Cassidy, Spawn is supposed to be going to, was it sci fi? Like uh, book series is supposed to be going to sci fi or something like that. Animated? Uh, no, live action. I guess Kevin Smith is somehow involved with it, too. I'm so glad that guy's still alive. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. He had a close call, didn't he? The closest how, you can get. That's how he lost his dad, man, having one of those heart attacks. That's sad. Um, you said something that reminded me of something else. Oh, the Spawn. Uh, somebody was saying that Spawn uh, Deluxe hardcovers were out of print. And I saw a tweet from Todd McFarlane saying that they were um, – working on things like to continue the deluxe hardcovers and something else. So I know that Jess isn't excited about that, but I actually collect those shitty books because I like art. Yeah. I would totally love to get those. Cause uh, I think the cover to spawn number seven, I believe it is where he just like, he just has like the bandolier of like bullets and like all these guns. Yeah. yeah. Like one of my favorite covers of all time. The more you talk about books, Omar, the less confidence I have in you. <laughs> You're the one that has half naked chick like with no contents in them. I shouldn't even be listening to you. I don't remember. Stuff. You gotta remember Omar reads smart comics, remember? <laughs> yeah, I look at stupid comics. I read smart <laughs> comics. Thank you. I look at stupid comics all the time. I, I own the Witchblade Compendiums, man, because it's got art by, you know, Michael Turner, Mark Silvestri, and Francis Manipole. It's got some of the earlier Francis Manipole art in there. David Finch. Ugh. Hey, you, you say, send me that compendium. I'll get it signed by everybody for you. Dude, that thing is going to cost me like $30 to ship. There's, there's the big freaking omnibus. The, and it will fall apart on the way down there. Yeah, right. They don't make them that well at Image. Or at least those those books. Back in the day, they didn't, yeah. No. But I remember I had the uh, the old Jinx, like, big old phone oh, Jinx. Yeah, the phone I had, like I had, like, three copies of it, and every time, like, pages just fell out of it. And Ben just... I talked to Bennis about it once. He goes, yeah, just they use shitty glue and the warehouse just, you know, is the shitty hot warehouse. It just eats it all up. So Taylor Brown asked the best question ever. <laughs> Why don't you read it, Jess? Uh, which Omni bro would come out on top in a gladiator match? Five dudes enter and one comes out alive. It'll be one of us Mexicans because we're all going to have chains and shit like that. One of us Hispanic people. <laughs> So not Jess. Yeah, not, not Jess. I'd yeah. be the first to go. I don't know, man. I think Jess has like a brutal side to him. <laughs> be like pulling some. He's read a lot of fucked up books, so you know he's gonna be <laughs> pulling your guts out and choking them with. You. I'd have to give it to Geo because he's too nice in person. Yeah, so I think a nice there's like guy. a secret. There's a secret like evil to him. He's the kind of guy that will crap on a shank and then stab you with it so you die a slow death. <laughs> Just like salmonella. <laughs> That's dark. You definitely win. Jaguar ball. <laughs> My man, Chris M. Hey, Omar, how great is that Legion Quest uh, oversized hardcover? Mike Lombardo wants to know. And we um, know the answer is Double Dip City right there, son. Not really, man. Not if you like you like that kind of stuff. It's got the uh, it's got the one Phalanx Covenant issue that was not included in the you know in the Phalanx Covenant like hardcover because they included it in the uh, Generation X Volume One for some reason. Uh, I know they had that one X Factor issue where Legion like finally wakes up or something. Mm -hmm. from yeah, we talked about that at the beginning. Oh, okay. and, it's, and it's oversized. It's got Annual Three. It's got better paper than the. Prelude to the Age of Apocalypse. I was sold on it. I, I pre-ordered it. And honestly, a 50% off, if you use the 4% off code, too, that's 54% off. You could have gotten that thing for like 35 bucks. So. And what's that code again, Omar? Omni Bros Live. Not yep, good for the rest of this week. That's right. Well, yep. Friday. Friday. Well, that's the rest of the, you know, the, the week that matters. Yeah. So everybody use that code tomorrow when you get that order started up. Okay, okay. I got one more question, then I got to get going because um, my kids got strep and I told my wife I would help. Um, so this is a really good question. I'm, I'm curious because what you guys would say. Iron Cardinal is asking, you can only take three Omnis with you on a deserted island. Which are you bringing? Well, if I'm alone on a deserted island, you know I'm taking <laughs> Naughty and Nice by Bruce Tim. <laughs> Just is taking all the stroke material. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm <laughs> well, I'm gonna be alone, man. I gotta have that. Okay, I see your point. 
<laughs> My first choice is Annihilation. <laughs> annihilation would be one for sure. Uh, hmm, all my omnis are out there, but okay. X Men, uh, X Men by Claremont and John Byrne and Dave Cockrum. So that's my second choice. Third choice. Well, I'll let you guys go. My second choice would be the Harley Quinn New Fifty Two Omnibus, as I want to laugh, even though I'm stuck alone by myself with just me and a nudie book. And <laughs> just jacking it till you're dehydrated. Yeah. Like that's any different than real life. <laughs> and Infinite Crisis Omnibus. Ooh. Because oh, I love that story, and it is a huge Omni. That is a good pick. You, you could float off the island with that Omnibus. Um, and that's it. But I'm, I'm waiting to hear from you, and then I got to get going, Gabe. What do you got? Uh, I would do uh, Fantastic Four Volume 2 by Lee and Kirby. Coming of Galactus. Uh, this is a good pick. Yeah. Damn it! Amazing Spider-Man would be up there too. Ah, go ahead, keep going. <laughs> um, is there is there a time frame when this is going to happen? Can I do this after the Mark Wade uh, Fantastic Four Omnibus comes out? Sure. So Whatever. yeah, I'll choose that. And That's good choice. Um, Two Fantastic Fours. You don't like variety yeah. in life, huh? Okay. No, no. Uh, but my third one would be uh, Gotham Gotham Central. Oh, oh good, good choice. choice. Good choice, good choice. My Just, third one would be the absolute green. I'm picking an absolute, absolute green lantern, green arrow. My favorite run ever in history of ever to ever to end all evers. That's my favorite comic book. Wow. Okay. Uh, well, you're kicked off the island because he said three omnis and you said, I know. Two, so, and you brought a dirty book with you, you weirdo. So, <laughs> I love that you actually thought this out. You're like, this is really happening. <laughs> well, yeah. Hey, our viewers deserve the best. <laughs> no you one's are... watching me, so I could be as disgusting as I want. <laughs> I'm not going to use lotion, just sand. <laughs> I didn't think it that far through. Dave K <laughs> said he'd bring his damn si <laughs> big damn sin city so he could use it as a raft. Oh, just hollow that thing out, man. Uh, All right. Iron Cardinal said Infinity Gauntlet. That's a great one. It's a good one, uh, too. All yeah. right, gentlemen. I will see you guys on Thursday. Uh, good night, chat. You can find me on my channel, Near Mint Condition. Keep watching these guys, though. Thank you for joining us. Good Thanks night, for everybody. being here, Omar. Yeah, Got it. See you, man. Bye. Hey, we can take questions for like another five minutes. Yeah. Only questions about how much we hate Omar, though. <laughs> Uh, so I'm I'm getting concerned on what book they're gonna make us pick for our book of the month, our reading assignment. Because they haven't said anything about that yet, Jess. Oh, the reading assignment. Uh, right. The two books? No, no, not the two books. Oh, the, the main reading, book. The reading assignment for winning the the trivia the uh, trivia contest episode. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, because you know it's Omar and it's it's Riley, so it's gonna be like. Some like I don't know, like disgusting anime or something like that. I hope not. But. <laughs> uh, yeah, they get to pick those books uh, or that book, the reading assignment. It's probably going to be just some super dialogue-heavy Silver Age book or something. Oh. Yeah, it's probably gonna be like, what is it? I could see it being like Uncanny X Men Volume One by Claremont, where it's just nothing but word bubbles, right? Explaining who everybody is, every issue. <laughs> Do you guys think the creepy and eerie runs will ever get reprinted? Reprinted? That sounds good. If they did, I remember loving those as a teenager. Yeah, they've been reprinted before, but. It's like ha they do like half the volumes and then another company picks it up and then they redo it in like a different format or like a different, you know, spine and dust jacket and everything like that. So I wish one company would just stick to it and just reprint them all. Yeah. All that Warren stuff is great. I would love more and more pre-code comics to get like reprinted. Crime books, you know, all that great. So they're, they're out there, but they're just kind of getting scarce and hard to find. Gabe, do you have any cool creators scheduled for Torpedo this summer? Uh, uh, 
Uh, there's this guy you might have heard of him. He's kind of a new, new to the scene. His name's Frank Frank Miller. Is it Frank Miller? Yeah, Frank Miller. He'll be at the store June 30th. This Saturday we have uh, Dave Johnson. We have uh, who's the other guy? Tim Sell. So those mm. are two really cool guys to get there. Next month we got Tyler Kirkham and uh, Jim Chung. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't know the schedule off the top of my head. It's so many people coming. Jim Lee's going to be there with Mark Silvestri, Alex Sinclair. I think we got Whisper Tashiel is going to show up too with Scott Williams. Wow, uh, that's an all-star lineup. Yeah, November. That's 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 just his vacation with us, where he's going to have uh, woo uh, uh, Adam Hughes, uh, maybe a special guest, and uh, Greg Horn. So that's going to be fun. Nice. That's, I get, that's when I get my lap dance that uh, Jess is going to pay for. Yep, that's right. I owe you your first lap dance. Yep. Well, not my first, but the first for that for that outing. I've had plenty of lap dances. <laughs> okay. No, yeah, right. The first when we go out. <laughs> right, right. <The> first ever. <laughs> is that Sandman Absolute Volume 5 worth it? From what I heard, I kind of just want the first four in the death book. Uh, I think it is worth it. I will just say it is worth it. What's what's wrong with volume five? Why is that a question? I, I don't know. It's got all the death stuff in it, and I think it's important for the other four books. Yeah, because that'd be just kind of odd if you have the four absolutes and then the uh, the prelude stuff, but not the last one. Yeah, I mean, I haven't read all of it, so that's what I was wondering. We have a viewer from Malaysia, Furkan Muhammad. Welcome, dude. Oh. What's the next book review after Planetary? Yeah, that's what we were talking about earlier. We got to wait for uh, Riley and Omar to give us some random ass manga that we don't want to read. Oh, that'll be the next book review. Okay. Yeah, that's the next one. I don't have to take part in that one. I was the moderator. <laughs> no, no, you're stuck in there with us. You should have gave me the answers. <laughs> Uh, Mike F., I don't know what happened to Aquaman Earth 1. It would have been a good book. It just hasn't come out yet. Because nobody cares about Aquaman besides Geo. <clears throat> and maybe like, you know, 50,000 other people, but still. Remember those Ms. Marvel Omnis that showed up a while back that someone printed oversized? <laughs> Has anything from that person showed back up? Um, not to my knowledge. Yeah, that's somebody in the group that did that custom, right? Is that what that was? If I, remember I guess so. I don't. I'm not really dialed into that. I don't really remember that those Ms. Marvel Omnis. Uh, <laughs> so I don't. I can't really speak to that one. I don't remember those. Whatever happened to the Flash Earth one? It was the first one announced, huh? I don't know. Good question. Did you guys see the binding on the new DC Omnis? Uh, I think their binding has gotten better. What was the last Omnibus they put out? I'm trying to think. I know uh, I got, got, I got Harley. in Exile. Okay. But I haven't relaxed it yet, so I can't uh, tell you how good it is. I mean, if it was my choice for the next book review, it would be Infinity Gauntlet since the movie's coming out. But That's a week from this Friday? Yep, yep, yep. That came up quick. I got I to gotta stay away from like YouTube and Internet for a while. I don't want any spoilers or any more trailers to come out. Any upcoming statues that you two are excited for, says Taylor Alexander Cassidy. Uh, I'm getting the Jessica Cruz bombshell, and that will probably, well, no, it's not true. It'll be my last <laughs> bombshell for this year. <laughs> not ever. Until the next one comes out. Yeah. yeah, until the next one comes out. I decided I'm not going to get Joker's Daughter. That one looks cool, but I'm not going to get it. Um, so um, I don't... Uh, I don't think I'm going to get anything. Those, that's probably the next statue I'm going to get, and then that's really going to be, be it for me and statues for a while. Yeah, same with me. I'm kind of out of the statue stuff for now. They're just getting kind of expensive, and, you know, 
how can I buy any other statue after having the Thanos on the throne statue? Yeah, so that is the ultimate. Right. All right. Uh, but I am super excited. I cannot wait for, I'm going to get my first hot toy, which will be oh. ne uh, Neo from the Matrix. So oh, I, got that yeah. one. I got that one on order. That is cool. Jess, what's your next interview on your channel going to be? Those are always very entertaining and insightful. Assuming you're serious and not sarcastic, because I've had somebody really rude on my <laughs> channel recently. So I'm going to assume you're not him, Taylor Brown. Uh, if that's a serious question, thank you very much. And uh, I think I'm interviewing Lewis McGregor next week on uh, why comic books don't get as much um, respect as the movies do. Gabe, does your store sell a lot of trade paperback hardcovers at cover price? Does it try to compete with online prices? Yeah, all of our trade paperbacks hardcovers are cover price in the store. We have separate stock for conventions that are half off. So when we do conventions like San Diego, C2E2, stuff like that, we have a massive half off uh, trade paperback hardcover uh, booth at conventions. But the in-store stock, since we get that through Diamond, at just our normal discount, we have to sell them more or less at cover. Our pull box subscribers do get 20% off. Um, but yeah, no, we can't really compete with online prices. It's, those are two completely different types of inventory, two completely different types of monsters. Places like Amazon, they just order so much, they can do the discounts. Um, in stock trades, I'm assuming it's probably the same thing. I mean, they must be getting their books at you know really great prices to give us those weekly discounts, including our discount code. So there's, you know, we just don't have that kind of clout or, you know, uh, invoice orders at this point. Yeah, they must just have a giant yeah. warehouse full of books. For, right. Plus, I mean, we have, you know, a brick and mortar store, you know, lights and insurance and, and employees and stuff like that. That's, is, you know, different types of uh, nut that we need to crack every month. Yeah. So, Omnipool can't wait for the DC Bombshells Deluxe hardcover. Me too. I'm with you, Omnipool. I love Marguerite Benning's, uh, Bennett's, sorry, Marguerite Bennett's writing. <clears throat> Matt Miranda says, Gabe's shop, shop came out for Silicon Valley Con. So many CGC books. Yeah, yeah that, was our, think... that was our first uh, CGC only booth. We had two conventions that weekend. We had, you know, C2E2 in Chicago and then... Uh, Silicon Valley that same weekend, and that was our first all CGC booth, and it was pretty successful. I think Gabe's store must be the the king of CGCs from what I've seen. Yeah, that's a like fact. An amazing amount. <laughs> amazing amount. Taylor Alexander Cassidy has a good question for you, Gabe. Would you suggest working at a comic shop? I graduate from college in two weeks and want to apply at my LCS. Um, yeah, no, working at a comic book store is great. You have to have, you know, honestly, applying at a comic book store, most comic book stores just don't take applications and do interviews, like, say, like, you know, a normal business would. The best way to get into a comic book store is going to take time and effort where you have to be a known friend of the store. Like, you'd be better off trying to volunteer for special events, be there, um, as much as you can to help out with, you know, little errands that come up and stuff like that. Make yourself more of a, um, a familiar with the store. I don't know how your, your local LCS does, but every LCS I've ever known doesn't just sit people down and do interviews and hire people that way. The business is too, too important. Customers are too important. Uh, the lifestyle of a comic book store is completely different than any other kind of business to just hire people off the streets. So you have to be a familiar with your comic book store to even get considered any kind of employment there for sure. But yeah, do it. It's fun. It's great. Um, there's customer service skills on there that you, that I don't think you can develop or learn anywhere else besides maybe like a restaurant um, that, you know, whatever job you're going for in the future with your college degree, customer service is going to be a part of it one way or the other, I believe. So you get a lot of, out of it from there. Good answer. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Jess, did you see the, oh, Julio's in the chat. Hey, Julio, what's going on, dude? Jess, did yep. you see the Batman Catwoman bombshell statue that was in the July solicits? Are you getting it? 
um, I'm, I guess I must be known for the bombshell statues. Um, that is a gorgeous statue. I seriously considered getting that. It is really intricate and beautiful. Um, I could be pushed into getting that. I'm going to have to see what the budget is for that month. Um, I, I'm not going to pre-order it. I'm going to wait to see what, what my financial status is that month. It has to be affordable in the constraints of the budget. Uh, my haul this week, notwithstanding, it looked like I hauled a lot, but a lot of it was um, spur of the moment stuff, that, or I'm sorry, <laughs> pre-order stuff rather. For the moment, that's a Freudian slip. Um, here's a good question for you, Gabe. Mm -hmm. Comicsology had some new trades that recently came from Marvel for 99 cents. I heard many comic book shops were so outraged because of this. Do you have an opinion on this? Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, it's, it's interesting because if you're a my understanding from the people I know in the comic book business and people who shop at comic book stores versus people who do digital it's one or the other like if you wanted to get that grand design x-men book and you're a physical collector you you know like myself or jess or anybody else here on the show 99 cents are free we probably wouldn't have got it anyways because we're more into the physical books so they could sell all their books for a dollar and we really wouldn't care because i don't think that's going to make people jump away from physical paper comics. I don't think that's going to do anything besides just get more money out of digital readers' pockets who are already dedicated to digital, if that makes sense. So if you're already a digital reader, those 99 cent sales are for you. If you're a physical reader, I don't think dollar comics on a digital platform that you don't own, you can't resell, you can't trade, you can't, you know, anything like that, or whoever knows, you know, this might be chicken little and the sky is falling one day the servers turn off and you lose all your books i don't think that's going to entice people like myself or jess or any of us who are physical collectors into switching over to digital and plus marvel even came out and said that wasn't a marvel thing that was comicology busting out a cell on their own stuff it's the same way as amazon who does super steep discounts or even ist that does super steep discounts on books that can affect other stores. That's their choice. Same as if we were to like discount CGC or discount books or anything like that. It doesn't affect everybody else, if that makes any kind of sense. Mm -hmm. Good answer again. Uh, Julio says, so that's a yes on my statue. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> uh, Taylor Brown says, I'm excited to hear your thoughts about the Batman issue of Planetary. Just read it today and really enjoyed it as a massive Bat fan. Well, you will be hearing all about it next Monday when we re we review Planetary, which was, a, I'll tell you right now, that is a great, freaking great book. Yeah, I I'm forgot how great it. it was. I'm loving it so much. And I mean, for people who might already read it and know who I, you know, know the type of books that I like, you, it's kind of obvious as to why I like Planetary, but it's great. Uh, it makes me want to read Authority again, too. It just reminds me of how much I loved Authority. Yeah, I mean, Planetary is just a deconstruction of comics. It, it's 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 fantastic. I mean, if you're if Planetary is if you're new to comics or have been reading comics for a few years and you read Planetary, I don't think you would get the same experience as longtime readers who are into like the history of comics and stuff like that. So it's great. <laughs> Okay, I want to see a Catwoman statue with the animated series costume. I'm surprised there hasn't been one out yet. Uh, I know there's been plenty of Harley Quinn statues um, for the animated series. Plus, I feel, gosh, I feel like there has been one. I'm not tuned into getting the animated series in statue form, so I'm not real sure about that one. There's a, a gallery. Uh, I think they're called gallery editions that DC put out that has her in her uh, uh, animated series costume. Mm, okay. Yeah, I feel like I've seen one. Okay, well, my computer's about ready to run out of juice, and I think that this would be a good time for us to talk about 
where to get your trades online. That would be there's Game only one place. That's InStockTrades.com, everybody. Check them out. And on this Tuesday, when you make your orders, make sure to use that awesome code they gave us, which is Omni Bros Live. You can throw your 4% up there and see the money be saved. Cha-ching, cha-ching. InStock Trades, where you can get <clears throat> up to 50% off your collected trades. Orders over $50 get you free shipping in the United States. Loyalty discounts plus the Omnibros Live discount. Not plus. Instead of this week, you get the 4% discount. Doesn't stack, but you use Omnibros Live as your discount code. Fabulous packaging. And the best customer service is InStockTrades.com. Yep. And this is the last week to use that code until we get one later on. So use it or lose it. That's right. We get it once a quarter, and it's only good for a week. So it ends this Friday at midnight. So get your shopping done. And Gabe, where can they find you? Everybody, you can find me here on YouTube uh, as Gabe Infinity Watch, Instagram as Gabe Infinity Watch. And if you're ever in Las Vegas, come visit me live and in person. Take a selfie with me or whatever at Torpedo Comics. So check us out there. Right on. And you can find me, OmniDog, on OmniDog's Vault on YouTube and on Instagram. Um, uh, yeah, OmniDog's underscore Vault. OmniDog's underscore Vault on Instagram, where I need to post my uh, pickups this week. And we will see you next, Omni Rose, on Wednesday with a Q&A and then on Thursday. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it. Good chat tonight. Lots of good questions. And a uh, good surprise appearance from Gabe, who I thought wasn't even going to be able to participate. So it's awesome. No, nope, I can't miss out on these guys. I, my week isn't complete if I can't hang out with you guys online. That is awesome. <laughs> so everybody, on behalf of the Omnibros Live, peace and love, peace and love. Flame on, everybody. <laughs>